Hey everyone, it's Peter here today, and I'm with Demetrius from Treehouse. Welcome to GameSpot, thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, today you're here to show us a little bit of Xenoblade Chronicles 2, uh, actually more than a little bit. I think you're going to go over the structure of the world, how quests work. Obviously there's a lot to talk about here, so please, tell me what we're looking at. Yeah, so I'm, I'm at the earlier part of the game right now. Actually, it's just uh, Rex Empire that I'm controlling at the moment. Um, you can see Empire is actually a little... Uh, incognito because we're still kind of wanted people. Everyone wants the Aegis um, as we kind of revealed. And so what I'm kind of here to show uh, today is just a full look at the game. Um, right now I'm in one of the first uh, major towns. This is Toragoth. Um, and I'm on Gormat, which is the first uh, really large titan um, that we've shown before. Let's see if I And titans over. essentially are the worlds, the landscape, yeah, and you're on the backs of these massive monsters. massive creatures, yeah. yeah. So I can, we can actually venture out into its back later. Uh, but what I want to do right now is I'm actually at the point in the story where I just met Tora. And uh, Tora uh, wanted me to help him out to put some... Uh, parts together so we can actually create Poppy, which is going to be his blade. So what I'm going to do is actually make my way back to Tora's house, uh, and we're going to get to see a cutscene of Poppy being created. Now there's something special about Poppy, right? Yes, she's an artificial blade. So what's really interesting about this world is, um, most uh, for, for all regular blades, you have a core crystal, which is like this diamond-shaped blue object. And when you touch it, if, if you have good resonance, you can actually um, bond with the blade that's inside that crystal. Now, in regards to Tora and Poppy, Tora can't really be um, a particular, uh, he can't really bond with a, a regular driver, so he's actually creating his own. He's just that smart. So we're actually making one instead. Okay. Really, really fascinating and cool stuff. So I'm actually making my way here. I got memories in a hidden area here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that there's some sort of um, like ramification of this of Poppy being different, like when it comes to combat and capabilities. Yes, there. She has her own special menu. So when we actually create a uh, create Poppy, I will go into that. Actually, you know what? Okay. I'm just gonna fast travel. It's just, I, get, I get lost so easy down here sometimes. It's such a big area. Yeah. So Xenoblade <laughs> games are typically very large. I'm assuming that's that's no different here. Yeah. It's a, it's a large world. Sometimes I get lost navigating. That's all me. But hey, bigger, bigger than Xenoblade Chronicles X? Is it even hard to say? When it's, it's hard. It's, that it's big? hard yeah. to say. It is a really huge world, though, for sure. All right, so we'll let this play. Little mad scientist set up here. It's really complete. Very complete. Just need to apply energy charge to activate. Tora, our friend's execution draws near. There's no time to lose. Make haste. I know, I know. Oh, okay, artificial blade. It's wakey wakey that time. Won't do, Tora. What what Tora do wrong? You can't keep calling her artificial blade. As her creator, the least you can do is Give her a proper name. Oh, um, well... Actually, friends, Tora did think of name for her. Very good name. Nice. Then I guess there's no problem. Well, why don't you introduce us, Tora? Right away! Now, wakey, wakey! Tora's very own blade! Ooh, Poppy! <gasps> Poppy? Master. Oh, 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 you see that? This is a turning Tora point for civilization, right? Settings. When you create artificial life. Maybe just, I don't know. But he had the settings incorrect. <laughs> this time should be okay. Second time go best. Power. Master Pond? I... I did it! Taurus, our 
masterpiece. World's first artificial blade, Poppy. Whoa! Incredible. It's nice to see some of the different personality here because I think so far most of what we've seen in this game is like very stoic kind of hero stuff happening. There is quite a bit of humor in this game. There's funny little moments like that I think combines with uh, the way the faces animate that creates some really, yeah. really cool parts. And I'm glad to say, so Tatsu was sort of a sticking point for me in Xenoblade Chronicles X. I was not a Tatsu fan. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that, <laughs> that Nopon character. That Potato head. Oh yeah. <laughs> Tatsu not lunch. Tatsu, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the uh, voice is very different in this one, as yes, you notice. Yes, uh, more palatable, I think, for me. <laughs> l less um, caricature, I guess you'd say. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the, he's definitely a different character, a different style character, although he is his own strange man, as you can see. Sure. <laughs> let's not dwell on that. Rex, let's go rescue Nina and Drolik. No time to lose. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip the rest of this. Okay. So now that we have Poppy, this is a good part because I now I'm not by myself anymore with just Rex and Pyra. But first, we need to play some Tiger Tiger <laughs> to get started, which is something we just revealed, which is awesome. So <clears throat> I'm pretty good at this. I'm gonna hopefully not screw this up because that would be really embarrassing. But the goal of this is to collect as much ether as possible. Oh, I should have got that on the way up. By taking these guys out, every little piece I'm collecting right there is something that I can add to Poppy. And the ether is gonna cost me the points to actually build it. Gotcha. So this is something that you will play semi-frequently as you try to upgrade Poppy? Yes, yeah. Can Definitely. You, can you just like grind on this right from the get-go and sort of you power up? You could, wow. you could. Okay. Um, it'll take a while after you start getting the, the tougher stuff. Yeah. Um, but it, it's definitely worth the while. I would say that building Poppy up is, she's very powerful in her own particular way. Um, and I can explain that once I can <laughs> concentrate again. Oh geez. So then how d how deep does this does Tiger Tiger get There's essentially? Because if you could quite play a, a lot few of it. stages, uh, the difficulty goes up pretty well. Uh, pretty high, but not like unbearable by any means. Sure. Sort of, mind you. Oh, there. Ooh, I got some air back. That's great. This guy. Takes are these twice. levels pre-designed or are they randomly? They generated? are pre-designed. Okay. All right. So now I go back up. Oh, looks like I missed one. All right. I'm gonna try to pick it back up. This is the harder part. It's always good for at least how I try to play is this clear a path out to not get hit and do that. What I just did. Okay. Ooh, we're looking good. I'm gonna collect all those. All those, almost. Get it? Yeah. Oh, all right, there we go. Okay, so I did, I did pretty good. Let's see what I got. Each of this is random right here. We don't know what we're gonna get until it actually reveals itself. Okay. Okay, so each little blue gem is ether that's going to be used as points to build uh, parts. And the little gears there are gonna be actual parts that I receive. Okay. Ah, uh, I'm not gonna take too long, I'll just do A, A. Does Poppy serve like a pretty important role in the story or is she more of a sort of point for just experimentation and diversity? She, she is important that um, she is the main blade for Tora. Right. And at this point uh, in the game, she, she uh, excuse me, Tora um, is kind of like your tank in the game. Gotcha. So he's very good. I'm where Rex is being the, the main damage dealer. Um, so there is an importance to that. But what's, what's unique is let me close this out, actually, I'm gonna skip this. They're just saying congratulations and everything. But I'll open up the menu here and kind of explain the role here. So now that I have um, Tora, it's great because I no longer have to worry about uh, me, myself, running around trying to you know, minimize the damage. Mm -hmm. So when I open up the menu here, what makes it unique is, okay, so I have Rex here, he's a level 10 warrior. I have two blades in my uh, army right now, right? Um, and one of them actually is a tank, this guy right here, Hayate. But now since I have Tora and Poppy, Poppy is, is pretty much a tank. She, she can do whatever she wants. But if I go into Poppy Swap, <laughs> you can kind of take a look at her role, Elemental Core, Cards, and Ram. And right now her role is a tank but you can change her to a healer or an attacker. So she is. She can do something that really not other people can do. And especially, um, you can change the elemental core, which is really key, yeah. um, because you need certain elements to stack on top of each other to perform a really powerful combos. So she's a really good way to, I guess, it seems like to 
get around the fact that you might not always get the blades that you want Correct. because the blades are randomized. Yeah, because yeah. you're looking, you're always looking for particular play styles and particular um, elements. Um, for me in particular, I, I unfortunately never got a blade for this that uh, uses an ax for Rex, but I like to have an ax blade uh, because he has a particular art that launches enemies into the air, um, which is part of the driver combos. Um, essentially, it, it leaves an enemy defenseless for a, a small yeah. period of time where you can just really wail on them, and it allows other setups and stuff like that. And that's, it's just really, really cool. Um, so what, what we're working for right now to the goal in the story is our other uh, character in our party, Nia, um, has been thrown in jail, essentially, for being a naughty girl. Uh, so what we need to do now is try to rescue her. But what I'd like to do, actually, since you already saw some story stuff, let's actually show off some side quests and a little bit more of, of the town itself. I was going to ask, the so side quests have long been a huge part of the Xenoblade series and famously difficult to find all of them and complete all of them, mostly due to the, well, at least in the past, the time of day when characters would show up and even the fact that like there are you know various prerequisites, that, like cascading sort of quests where one has to be completed to open up another from a different character to sort of at least in X, like create bonds between NPCs. How has the structure of side quests changed at all uh, for two? Um, there's still a lot of different side quests uh, to go upon. Um, the interesting fact is they they kind of split it up. Um, there's, there, how do I explain it? There, it still has an effect on the world, kind of like in, in Xenoblade Chronicles X, actually, um, where there's there's multiple choices and stuff like that. Not as much as X, but. Um, they still have those, and then there's certain actual regular missions as well for uh, the actual blades themselves. Okay. So it expands the world and the lore in, in an all new way. Um, just real quick, what I'm doing here is I'm buying a new chip, um, core chip, and that's what you put in your weapon, and it, if you can see, it actually changes the yeah. look. Um, I'm not gonna do that, but I am going to do that for Poppy here. So I'm trying to see, all right, so I don't wanna lose my block rate, Right, so I, I'm probably gonna want to just use a 10 chip. Yes. Now for my, my own blade here, the nameless uh, katana, which I currently have, I'm probably not gonna want a 10 chip. I'm gonna want, yeah, a wing chip. Even though I lose my block rate, that's okay because I'm gonna rely on Poppy to be my tank. Gotcha. Oh, but I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> Just like real life, man. <laughs> Yo, man, can I borrow like a hundred gold? <laughs> All right, but that's that's kind of a look at that. Um, let me see, the next thing I want to do, since I just got Poppy, I'm going to go take a look and see if I can do any... Oh, perfect. All right. So, uh, right here is auxiliary cores, and these are cores that you can put um, into a blade to give them additional uh, stats and abilities. Hmm. So this boosts the blowdown resistance. So essentially she can't be knocked down um, and be out for a couple seconds. But I can do that to somebody else, which is great. So let's go ahead and do this. So here are items I've picked up around. And what I need to do is it requires four. Luckily, it doesn't require anything rare. So I can just go ahead and refine it. And well, it sometimes it will anything. ask for various grades. Yeah, right some on. might be very particular. Other times, not so much. All right, so I'm gonna go in here. Characters. I'm gonna go to Poppy. And I'm going to go. Oh, you know what? I'm silly. I can't put it in there because Poppy swaps different. So I see the little alpha oh, yeah. symbol next to her name. Is that maybe indicating that there are various versions of Poppy that you know she can be upgraded? Like there's a beta and a. There, it's yeah. I, that's something that we really haven't talked too much about. But there are um, different blades you can unlock. Let's see here. Actually, okay. I won't bother too many people with all this stuff. I'm like, all right, let me get into the deep stuff and set up in this hall. <laughs> I get way too excited about this game sometimes. <laughs> but, okay, since I still made that core chip, I can't use it on Poppy, I will equip it here. All right, so I already have critical up, now I have blowdown resistance on, okay. So let's put that into practice, but first, we don't really have a healer. So what I'm going to do is change my blade here and I'm going to use somebody that has uh, knuckles, and knuckles are allowing me to heal. Now, if you notice, the class effect's going to change, so my damage dealt goes up, the HP potions that I drop using sp particular arts goes up, and my aggro goes down, which is great, and I also gain agility, so I'm gonna That's equip very that. Kind of you. All right. So now I have an attacker and a healer and a tank. 
So I'm pretty good to go. Pretty here. well balanced. Yeah. So let's go on a side quest. Let me see, did I pick any up? Oh, no way. Go to the quest log. Knocked upon, no upon. Yes. I think I can do this. This one's pretty tough. It should be good. Yeah, I always loved the, I guess the tougher battles in Xenoblade games because the combat system is very deep, which lends itself well to tension. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got high hopes for this game. For that yeah, that's one of the things I noticed. Um, I, I have seen people uh, talk about the end of the combat system and, and how they're really excited. It, it's, I think this is one of the most refined Xenoblade systems that I've probably played out of the three. Mm. Um, I've really come to, to just love playing combat. <laughs> uh, I've sat and just, you know, taken down the really tougher enemies. Like, this is a level nine, I should be good. All right, Toro, where are you? There we go. And so, like in the past, I'm assuming attacks just kind of come, like standard auto attacks attack, just come yes. auto, yeah. So there's a couple things that we showed before. So you have your auto attacks, which build up your arts, which is in the bottom right. Yeah. I'm gonna position myself, actually, here. Two, three. So I attacked right after the third strike there, and you saw that little blue ring. That is called a cancel. So I canceled out of my art in, uh, excuse me, cancel out of my auto attack into an art. Mm. And what that does is build my special faster. Now, if you're wondering what a special is, it's pretty much the ability to let my blade attack themselves. Because right now you see I just have the weapon in my hand. Man, this guy just keeps running around. One, two, three. All right, one. To let's do that. Oh, really? I should have just canceled it earlier. There we go. Level two. This is killer. There we go. Ooh, and I picked up a core crystal. That's great. Perfect. So right there, you saw that I I just unlocked something. So because I killed that enemy, um, it actually let's see here. Up to my affinity chart. So that's a pretty. Uh... It's a pretty dense looking chart in my yeah. mind, considering how many potential blades are in this game. Yeah, so this is the really amazing and beefy part about this game. And I want to really go, go back again to say where it's really, it really sticks upon how you play and the type of blades you get. Because each one of these has different effects and they all have different requirements. Like this was perform a blade combo, so I need to do it one more time. Yeah. And then it, uh, it'll see, it'll boost my block rate by 20% when my HP is low. And then up here is the same. You have to do block and attack five times. Let's see, perform a driver combo five times, use an Aponic Storm, perform a blade combo five times. And then down here is what you need to do is increase your trust to unlock the next level when you get all these higher levels. And so building trust comes through just fighting together or doing fighting side together, quests? Fighting together, doing to side quests. Okay. Um, one thing to note um, and is a nice uh, tip. Now it doesn't work for Poppy or Pyra because they are always with your character, your main character, but for guys like here, like uh, se Semi, Semi, uh, when you send them on um, regular missions, mm -hmm. they will um, come back with, sometimes they'll come back with their affinity charts increased. Uh, because when they're out on the woods, even though they might not have to use Flying Knuckle 10 times, the game will assume it will, so sure. it's a bonus on doing um, Merc missions. Yeah. So it's always great to uh, go back and use those Merc mission laws. Something that you were talking about earlier, you and I were discussing how, how cool Merc missions can be. Yes, yeah, you showed us the Direct, which I guess now everyone maybe had a chance to watch. And remind me of Final Fantasy Tactics when you had characters that, you know, you couldn't necessarily take them into battle, but they could still be doing things on the sideline and grow and reward you in the process. So yes. personally speaking, I'm happy to see that that's in here because that makes me constantly be just doing multitasking, let's say. Yeah, and, yeah. and, it's, and, and it's also cool because nothing goes to waste, right. essentially, right? You, you're gonna gain, by the by midway through, you'll have a lot of blades, and it's great to send them on a, on a mission. All right, here we go, I need to protect this guy. Okay. These guys, I should be able to take down now. I avoided them in the right in the initial beginning because I did not have a proper tank. Oh yeah, we're good. I'm gonna just run these guys over. God. <laughs> Move into the next guy. Two, three, cancel. Uh, sort of a random thought. Curious about the resources around the map. That was another sort of thing in Chronicles and Chronicles X, where you would find little items glimmering on the map, and certain side quests would require that you have so many of a certain one, and they yes. were actually kind of difficult to find. Is that system still here? The system is still here, but they added some unique stuff to it. Um, in particular, 
this is that's when you really want to rely on your blades to help you out. Um, for example, when you're when you go to a collection point, um, there's different style of collection points. They're all labeled collection point, but they might get you different things, um, like minerals or or wood or something like that. And a lot of blades have different specialties in that, and that go from level one and beyond. And rather than just getting like say four wood, your blade special will kick in gotcha. and give you more blade ability. Excuse me, will, will kick in and give you more. Gotcha. So you'll get a higher chance of getting a whole bunch of more stuff. So if you play smarter, you can be more efficient. Mm -hmm. And that sure. goes for all. Of, so if you have like four, uh, whole bunch of blades in your party that all have that, and they're all in there, you're gonna get all of their points towards that when you when you loot something. Cool. So it's really really cool. Let's see. Oh, key affinity reward. Development one. All right. Okay. Let's go, characters. Let's see, what did you give me? Oh, okay, cool. Oh, wow, he really liked that. So as you can see right there, I just did that side quest, completed it, and that gained some really good trust. Let's see here. All right, Max, what would you get? Deal certain damage, okay. Back out. All right. So now that my, my rank is up, my trust is up, I'm gonna be able to actually switch uh, to him much faster and my arch to charge just slightly bit faster as well. Cool. All right, so we got that done. Whoa. Yeah, what's, I was gonna say, what's the biggest enemy in this environment that you feel comfortable fighting right now? Uh, let's give this guy a shot. All right. Okay, not both of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, not. yeah, what, what is the sort of punishment system here for losing? Like, if you were to try you, to fight you get, that- You, you get lost. knocked out, it's-, it's um, The fight just sort of ends and you yeah, can come back Yeah, the fight, so yeah, you know what? Let's just show you. Yeah, why not? Oh, poor Toro. I'm so toast. I'm just gonna pass out and go back to my previous checkpoint. Okay. And now, the checkpoint is probably saved after the quest completed? Um, it's or? wherever area that you discovered that was the closest main, excuse me, got the hiccups, um, to your main area. I'll show you when I'm opening the map here. Okay. And your progress from that side quest would continue. That would oh, stick, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah okay. So right here was the Torgoth Arch, is some place you can uh, skip travel to. So this would be the closest checkpoint. Gotcha. Um, and the reason that's really cool is because you don't want to have to to freak out too much or worry about exploration because this game not only is about combat but it's all about exploration. Yeah. Um, and you and will find yourself secret areas. <laughs> in and positions, you'll find yourself yeah. yeah up against all kinds of crazy monsters and that's not a bad thing. It ad adds attention to it and there's usually a great reward to it. Um, for example. I don't think I can sneak past this guy, but we could definitely try. Right, there, that right there is a level 81, so yeah. there's nothing I can do about that guy. Yeah, but it's neat to run into those dudes and think, man, when will I be able to go against that guy? What will I look like? Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. And that's that's kind of a key thing to role-playing games, right? Is that character you know, strength you start from level one and build up there and get really powerful abilities and just feel really strong at the end. All right, I just missed. But it looks like you found something. All right, good. Or is that just a way to get back up? It's that like is a, a way to area. get back up. But okay. Is that a collection the, point, that thing? Can you collect those? No, this is just, just a part, yeah. Just dressing, okay. Yeah, but there isn't actually, that's a key, it's actually a secret area over there. I forgot how to reach that one. Oh, this map Well, you just fall randomly, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think this leads to, let me see here. Yeah, I should be out of here, okay. I was trying to go to the den of that giant beast. Because I know he has a treasure chest locked up back there, but he's probably back now. There he is. Also, as you can see, there's a t giant Tyrannosaurus Rex. I believe it's 90. Yeah, and so you threw your hat on that T-Rex and you can just walk around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the wrong... I can try. I don't oh, think sorry, that one's going to work. <laughs> one of those every Switch game, though. <laughs> uh, we, just, we just love dinosaurs. Yeah. Let's see here. Is it right here? Okay, no, he's going to be out and about, right? All right, let's see if I can try to sneak over here. As you can see, we're getting to a higher higher area, so this is something where you would want to kind of qu come back and quest um, around. Oh, geez, yeah, I'm going to get destroyed. These guys have huge aggro ranges. Nope, 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 I'm noping out of here. <laughs> <laughs> was that just a no-pun joke? <laughs> <laughs> no, but okay. I like where that was going. <laughs> I'm no-punning out of here. <laughs> no pun intended? Damn, How about that one? Damn. Is that good? <laughs> uh, everyone's probably rolling their eyes yeah. back in the office. <laughs> Okay, um, so where was I? Let's try, let's do one more side quest. Um, and what I will do is, let's go back, back into town and see what we can pick up. Maybe I'll play with this other blade that we just got, right? Under well done indeed. Landmark, Waitree, so that's another little place we can kind of go to. All right, you know, we can, we can start on this guy. I could take this dude down. 
So as you can see, now I'm using a different style weapon and it's yeah. much faster. And as I talked about before, um, canceling is very important because it's the best way to build your special the fastest. So there's no three hits, right? So I have to kind of relearn, like I know it's at the end of that kick. Um, but you kind of right. have to learn the patterns of every enemy. There we go. Okay, there we go. We need to collect this because it's really important. Need that health. All right, now let's see if I can do some blow, uh, blow down. Knock him back. Oh, he resisted it. All right, I'm gonna do a level one. Okay, so I'm gonna try and do what is called a blade combo here. Let me run and get this other health. Oh, there we go. So I have a certain amount of time now to build up to a level two. I don't think I'm gonna do it in time, but I'll try. Yeah, I can do it. One, two, three. Uh oh, what did I just get? Okay. So I worked to a level two wind attack there. Oh, don't die on me, Tora. No. All right, I'm gonna resurrect him. Oof. All right, so now I did a level two wind, and now we're gonna do a level three earth, which should do quite a bit of damage. Time Is the right? button always the same for those quick time events? Always B? For that, it's always B. In other situations uh, outside of combat, it would be something different. Okay. Oh, this is gonna be tough. Oh gosh. Nope, he died. I don't think I'm gonna survive this. Uh oh. Blowback. No, I missed! <laughs> okay, run. Help. Let's try that. Okay, I need Pyra bad. Pyra, come here. Alright, so I switched to Pyra. And again, she's really what, you know, the blade you choose is what dictates the weapon you have. Right? Yeah, so all my arts just well. changed. Yeah. No! Okay, I gotta run. <laughs> <laughs> so all of my arts changed right there. Um, what I was trying to do there is switch to Pyro just to deal a little bit more damage, um, which just failed miserably. <laughs> um, but it would have it worked pretty well if I was able to get through that. Okay, no, no, no. <laughs> it's not what I want to happen switch back. Oh, I can't. So I'm just going to keep running here. There is another side uh, side quest that we can do. Oh, God. The level 17. Come on. Actually, since we, we just completed a quest, right, um, one thing that we can do is we, did, we didn't level up, but we did gain some experience points. And the experience points comes in two different ways. So one thing we can do is see if we gain enough experience to level up at an inn, which okay. is one of the cool features. Now, this is something that you can do, um, you don't have to do. So for those who are um, looking for a bit of a challenge, you don't have to go to an inn. Uh, it's, it's up to you, really. But What's the trade-off? Uh, essentially, it's just for those who just want a bit more of a challenge, that you don't have to rest at gotcha. an inn. Um, I do anyway, because it's, the game is still a good challenge enough. Right. Uh, so I'm gonna do a short rest, and I'm gonna level up. Cool, I do have enough for a level up. So Tora is probably going to be, yeah, level 11. Oh, yeah. So leveling up at an inn has, how else would you apply that experience to level up normally? Um, normally, you, get, you also get regular XP just in right. a conventional way, but then you get bonus XP when you complete missions, or excuse me, quests, side quests, and stuff like that. And that also goes towards the this. And that, those can only be traded in at an inn? Yes. I see. Yes. Okay. That was the piece I didn't get. And then um, something else we saw in the direct that made people love, you can have heart-to-heart -heart talks. Yeah. And when you go to an inn and rest there, a lot of times you'll get hints at where near nearest heart-to-heart -heart is, which is really cool. Um, those can be great benefits because they increase the trust, something we discussed earlier. And sometimes they also unlock certain key abilities on the affinity chart. Gotcha. Uh, well, that is a pretty significant look at Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which is coming out right before the end of the year, uh, December 1st, if yes. I'm not mistaken. Uh, and I think we've pretty much just scratched the surface, but Demetrius, thanks for coming in and showing us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, no worries. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, guys.